After having such a great response to deploy the Centurions, I figured it would be a good idea to dive into my process for creating 3D animations. One of the focuses of this channel is sharing tips and tricks, so I want to build on that with more content like this in the near future and possibly more tutorials based around ideas you see in this video. Thanks to everyone who has subscribed recently, I really appreciate the support. Let's jump in. First things first, I'll start with reference. So start Google searching images uh, and inspiration for the project at hand. So in this case, I searched for Thunderhawks, Centurions, Necrons, Monoliths, and gathered as many images as I could. Uh, artwork as well for, you know, to get um, inspiration for how the scene's going to look, my lighting, the style of the film and so on. And, and just gathering images to help me visualize things. And then once I've done that, I've got this app PureRef, which uh, is really handy for gathering images and putting it together a sort of mood board. Uh, it's really good because uh, you can pin it to your, uh, you know, can keep it above other programs. So if you're modeling away in Maya or ZBrush or whatever, you can have it there constantly as an image to help you get your proportions and, and so on. Once I've got all my reference together, I'm going to start modeling. So I'm doing most of the work for this project in Maya using PureRef to sort of keep the images on top, keeping proportions right and so on. That way you're getting sort of a fairly good representation of what you're modeling. As you can see with the Necron just there, the Necron, to be honest, I'm modeling those as a, a crowd unit, so they're quite low res. And then the Centurions are a bit higher res because they're going to be more hero assets. So I'm saving a lot of time just modeling things sort of at a level of detail that they're going to be in the shots so some things that will be far away from camera or you know like the, these crowd units i just won't put in a huge amount of effort modeling those when it comes to environments i'm using kitbash 3d for a lot of the uh, buildings and i'm loading them as proxies in this case so that there's a lot of these sort of empty squares in the scene and then they're actually loading at render time which saves a lot of memory um, so i've sort of done my own little custom setup there but going back to Kitbash 3D is super handy for things like this because it just saves a lot of time, you know, rather than me building the entire city, I can sort of build it modularly using um, the assets from this. So I bought, uh, I think it was Warzone about a year ago and I just dug it out and started using it for laying out the, the city in, in this uh, project. Um, obviously it's not quite sort of 40k looking but it's it's definitely sort of war, war zone so it works to a degree and then this sort of monolith hill I built in Houdini using height fields and that's another sort of really handy thing I've done a couple of tutorials on, on height fields it just lets you build really high detailed base mesh which then I can bring into Maya and then lay out uh, put displacement on and so on so for animation, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because I'm not the greatest animator. I use a lot of mocap for the, the Necrons, so I built quite a basic rig for the Necron um, warriors and just plug some animation uh, mocap into them. That's why they've got that goofy Necron run that a lot of people have commented on. And then the Centurions, I built a custom rig for these guys because they're kind of special needs in their build. Uh, and they have been quite difficult to animate because their armor plates are all intersecting and they're just a really strange sort of build overall so quite a challenge to even move around and then just doing basic animation that's why they don't move that much in the the film quite a limited range of motion really and then when it comes to the rest of the the film there's other bits of animation here and there but a lot of it is the heavy lifting is done by can, camera animation so you know, I'm doing lots of sort of crash zooms and whip pans and whatever. Camera shake is sort of adding to the, the, the action. And camera shake and motion blur can hide a multitude of sins when it comes to animation. So that's what I've done with a lot of shots. Uh, always good. I did all the effects for this film in Houdini. Uh, I much prefer working in Houdini when it comes to things like explosions or... I mean, I've never done crowds before. This was my first go at crowds, but I, I enjoyed using it. For, for crowds. Um, I followed quite a few of the tutorials that uh, Houdini have on their, their channel and I found a really uh, useful instructor on CG circuit set of tutorials by a guy called uh, Mikhail Peterson, uh, Crowds for Feature Film. Those really helped me figure out sort of some of the interaction problems I was having and 
getting things working like sparks flying off of the guys that get hit by bullets and so on. So that was really handy to to, to see. And then the the rest of the, the the sort of effects that I did, I did quite a lot of explosions and smoke and that sort of thing. And uh, there's like the atmosphere re-entry shot, which I'll be doing a tutorial on this one because this was one of my own just effects that I cooked up. Um, quite simple. It's just basically a pyro sim flying around the the ship, but you've got that sim then driving particles which were rendered and comped on top with the rest of the film really most of the film has been done that way so everything's been rendered out in layers um, and then a lot of com comping to, to bring it all back together so that will bring me on to the next uh, chapter so lighting and rendering that's where kind of again I, I said before you could hide a multitude of sins with you know motion blur and so on same with lighting if, if you light something quite well i think it can really help even if your textures and so on aren't the best if you light it really well you can hide a lot of problems so it looks like i've got a lot a lot of lights in this scene but really it just comes down to a hdri a directional light and then a bunch of area lights for the the monolith like the green lights coming in um out of the the doorway and so on so it's not that complex in terms of lighting other than there's a lot of like miles of flashes and that sort of thing um, and then what I've done as I mentioned before is just separated everything out to layers so there's like layers for the clouds and for the smoke and it saves a lot of time in rendering so it's all layered up and then when it comes to comping you get a bit more control over you know if the smoke maybe you want it to be a different color or the monolith is not the right color or you want to add some glow to this and not that so that's the power of comping so let's go on to, to comping now um, so com compositing is where you get to just add all those nice finishing touches you know glows here glints there some lens effects and take all of those raw renders and just get as much out of them as possible it's sort of like if you do photography and you've got your raw files and you've got all that data it's, you know you can bring back the highlights or whatever it's like that so in this case i'm sort of putting together a what you would maybe do in photoshop you know a layer of a star layer that i've then used the 3d camera from maya to match to the renders and then just layering up those effects i did in houdini um, the pyro effect and then the sparks and everything grading them to, to you know to get the right look that I want because it's they're, they're a bit too hot from the, the render so grading them down a bit and then layering those up on top of each other adding some pro some uh, lens effects and so on um, just to it's funny in photography a lot of photographers are always trying to get them you know more perfect lenses trying to get rid of the chromatic aberration but we end up adding all of that back in, you know, chromatic aberration and halation and lens flares and everything sort of going backwards as it were, which is quite funny really. But it adds a little bit of, it makes it more tangible, I suppose. So then that's that's kind of what finishes it off. And actually what I did when I finished all of these renders and I brought them into DaVinci Resolve is I put film convert on the whole thing so I got all this sort of film grain and so on and that, that just gives it that nice kind of organic -y look even though they're CG renders. So that concludes the kind of short overview of a lot of the, the processes that I went through to make the 3D. I hope this has been interesting. If it has, drop me a comment below. If you would like to see a tutorial on it, any of the things that I've shown, drop that in the comment below or if you just found it interesting, let me know. Uh, so thanks for the support and thanks for watching.